I'm Sean from Arfield Rugby Media. I'm Simeon from the TikTok Ref. Guys, I'm Murray, also known as Boss for Rugby HQ. And you're listening to the Rugby Connection Podcast. For the fans, by fans. Okay, hello and welcome to episode 7 of the Rugby Connection Podcast. Murray, how are you? I'm alright. Um, it's been an interesting couple of days, to say the least. Um, had my birthday throughout the week, had the lines on, um, had a lovely gift from the TikTok ref, so thank you for the referee tops, mate. Simeon, how are you getting I on? No problem. Um, I, I've been on holiday to Northern Ireland. I... Not watched the most rugby, I've refed a lot of rugby. I've just been non stop. I mean, it was a great holiday, Can't, couldn't go wrong with it. Lovely, lovely country, a bit of all Northern Ireland, but, and we're back on it now, back into lots of refereeing this week for me, a lots of refereeing. Sean, how are you getting on? Yeah, no, I'm good, thanks. Uh, today was a tiring day because uh, I had two Gaelic football matches back to back in the soaring cool. heat. Yeah, 25 degrees now. I only came off the bench for the first one and I played the full second one. But, you know, even Gaelic football compared to rugby is a lot running, but is a lot of running. But when you're in 25 degree heat, that was incredibly tough out there today. But uh, I'm I good. So far. Yeah. <laughs> I'm you'll pushing be, through. You'll be sore tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, I will be. Yeah, I'm already tired. I'm going to sleep like a baby tonight. <laughs> Did you win, though? Um, we won the first one, and then we lost by a point in the second one. That was heartbreaking because oh. obviously, you know, a point is, you know, as close as it can get. So, yeah, but, um, yeah, it was it was good fun, but tough out there. <laughs> I'll say it that way. <laughs> I'll put it as that. Uh, yeah, sure. We'll crack on anyway with our international, a lot of international rugby once again to cover this week. What is it? The third week on the bounce. I think we've just been covering international yeah. rugby. Yeah, yeah, third. Thanks, sec. Yeah, third full go for international gen. Some great games. Yeah, it's been a good week. Good week. We we'll have to we we'll have to go all the way back to Tuesday, though, don't we? For mm. Australia France two. <laughs> yeah, yeah, second test. Yeah. So, what are your thoughts on that, Simeon? Did you get to see it? I <laughs> was in Port Rush that day, so not really. I saw the <laughs> score: France won in Australia for the first time in a very long time. Fair play, and that's all I have to say. <laughs> <laughs> Short and sweet. I love it. Hi. <laughs> I was having ice cream in the sun. It was great. <laughs> That's what you were thinking of. You weren't thinking about the test match anyway. <laughs> no, you wonder what I was thinking of. Um, <laughs> moving on. Um, yeah, so like Simon said very briefly there, France got their first one on Australia soil in 31 years. It was 28-26, very tight game. France made a lot of errors in the first test. This time the roles were reversed. It was a lot of Australia's hands making all the errors and France pouncing on it. But France did the right thing this time. The clock went red and they kicked it out. There we go. There we go. So, well done. So, the series at that point was one apiece. So, it was all to play for coming Saturday. But we've got, we'll go to that shortly. We're now on to Wednesday and we're on to the Lions Tour, boys, against South Africa. A, can't really call it A, though, can we? That was a first That was team. not 18 World Cup winners. Absolute bollocks! One one debutant and doesn't get capped because it's a South Africa A, so pointless, <laughs> absolutely pointless. Again, didn't watch it. I was in Belfast that time. Uh, the TikTok ref did win crazy goal, so big wins out there. <laughs> I think uh, we should just kind of quit the rugby today and just hear Simeon talk about his <laughs> talk about all Gaelic football. Eh? Let's just let's do it a sports for once. Like, yeah. Yeah. Put the rugby aside for once. <laughs> oh, Sean, no. what what did you think of the South Africa A Lions game? Um, I think to be honest, just looking at the result, I think I think that's a good kind of result for the Lions in terms of you know in two thousand nine the Lions didn't lose until. Uh, the uh, the first test wasn't it the first test yeah the first test yeah so I think getting a loss before the test series I think is good because if you know South Africa you know exposed a couple of the Lions weaknesses and although South Africa were poor in the second half and the Lions kind of the South Africa or uh, the Lions kind of came back into it but um I think overall I think it's good for Lions to be tested this early well not this early I suppose the first test isn't too far away but um but yeah no I think it's I think that's a good result overall and the one thing I wrote down was. Do not kick the ball to Colby. That's that's yep, one nope. thing wrote down. Real, yeah, I, I, real... I've seen enough clips of that game. I mean, real from what I can comment on, what I have seen, when Zamet got the ball, he looked good. He just didn't get the ball enough. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. I mean, Chris Harris, this whole tour, 
has been playing out of his skin. And it's obviously just like it's like every Lions tour. There's always like a handful of players that definitely put their hands up. You get some that are guaranteed locks in unless they're injured, but you get the few like Chris Harris in this tour that is just I'm starting. This is why I'm starting. And like people like I keep saying it, he's one of the best defensive centers in the world rugby. And people are arguing with me because he got stepped by Colby. Everyone gets stepped by Chess and Colby. He makes an effort. Right, I'd like to see a lot of these people that I assume are English. Go on, go back to the World Cup final. You all got stepped by Colby. Oh, and Farrell had flashbacks. I've seen that in the, even on the on Wednesday he had flashbacks. Farrell couldn't do anything to save his life that game. Um, But no, you know what? It was 17-3 at halftime to South Africa A and 17-13 at the end so and we were actually closer to winning it was just a knock on and South Africa did the right thing and kicked the ball out but it's like an unofficial fourth test we've got a lot to learn from it we've done a lot to learn from it if you when we discuss the Stormers game from Saturday yeah and I've got I've wrote down a little personal one uh, it was nice to see Morney staying back in the famous green and gold jersey he was on the Lions tour in 2009 he won he helped win that series. He did everything in rugby and just to see him back, controlling the pace, controlling the game so comfortably at the age of 37. Hats off to you. Unreal. Yeah, I think uh, Lions fans were probably getting very sad flashbacks when he was lining up for the first penalty. Yeah, so, yeah, not not very uh, <laughs> enjoyable. Man. But, um, just, just kicked so smooth. Just off the tee, it was unreal. He did miss a kick at the end, but everyone misses a kick oh, for the most part. Huge human but effort, but his kicks to touch and just they just seem so effortless. And I'm like, you're winding me up. Like, this is a masterclass. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, it's uh, great to see him back. And he's, he's fairly uh, still going strong, as you said. But um, absolutely. Yeah. So um, moving on. On uh, was it Friday or Saturday? No, Saturday it was Saturday. Tonga against Samoa. Um, yeah. Samoa got the 37-15 win to qualify for the 2023 Rugby World Cup. Um, yep. Murray, what are your thoughts? Um, I actually missed this game, but I heard a lot of great things. And you know what? It was just like last week. Samoa doing what they had to do to get qualified. And I can't just stop feeling sorry for Tonga at the moment. Like they just cannot catch yeah. a break. It was a lot tighter this week, this week so I'll give them praise for that. And again, it's obviously it's just like regular gameplay, like you will get better through games and not just training. So it's always a positive. But you know what? All congratulations to Samoa. We will see you at France 2023. And yeah, they always play exciting rugby at the World Cups. Yeah, absolutely. Samin, your thoughts on that? Yeah, and didn't really watch the game. I But you just love to see all the Pacific Islands in the World Cup. They all should just be there. You feel like every Tonga, Fiji, Samoa all should just be there. And I Glad that we've got Fiji, we've got Samoa. Let's, God forbid, hope Tonga do get in. And it'd just be great to see them all back there. But nothing really common. I enjoy watching Samoa in the World Cup. So, they're a good team to watch. Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah. So, for those who don't know, Samoa will be joining uh, Argentina, England and Japan alongside America's two in Pool D. So, you know, you never know. Samoa could pull up a bit so of a shot. Be, that would be trip. Canada or Argentina, um, Uruguay probably, won't it? Uh, yeah, could be, or could, yeah, yeah, I'm not even sure, to be honest, <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> that's Some, not a fun pool to be in. Yeah, that's... that's England, a... Argentina, Japan, and Samoa right now. Oh, Japan, Argentina's going to be a tasty game. That's yeah. guaranteed. That'll mm-hmm. be great. That'll, but yeah. plenty of time to look away for that. Yeah, yeah well, let's, think... let's get, get caught out in a few years, lads. Yeah, but I think, you know... Words. As a sorry, I was just going to say, as us being neutral, I think wouldn't we just like to see like Japan and Argentina get to the quarterfinals and England get knocked out once again? Oh, 100 <laughs> percent! Like, let's. Do, I mean, if Samoa get into quarters, let's just get England out. Yeah, anybody but England. <laughs> On their current form, could well be them out. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Stranger things. To all our English them. listeners. Don't put angry comments in this comment section. We're all Celtic, and that's the end of it. We don't yeah, you like don't, you. You lost you... the football as well. Well done. No, I don't have an issue with it. I think that's, that gets misleading. People think like 
because we root against England in sport, it's because we don't yeah. like England. That's not true. I'm I like technically England. fully English, so you yeah, know, it doesn't even. So we like, don't talk he, about that. He says he's Welsh, but he sounds English. So there you go. <laughs> Both my parents are English. It's a bit. Yeah. Um, yeah, but like people think instantly because you want like England to get put with tournaments, regardless of rugby, football, body basketball, whatever, they think it's because we hate England as a country. It's not. It's just you don't want. They don't root for us. We don't root for them. That's how it goes, and that's all I'm saying. On exactly. It. That's gonna... how it will always be. I mean, it's just how it is. Yeah, too much uh, generational conflict there for that ever to change. Pretty much. Very <laughs> um, yeah. Um, no. So New then Zealand after, yeah, so that's exactly it. New Zealand, Fiji, Murray. What do you think? Uh this. I mean, last week was so good. We were talking Fiji up big time from after last week, but they did not show up this week at all. New Zealand proper went for it. I know they got a convincing win last week, but they left it very late on to get that convincing win. They were not messing around this week. Sevi Reese getting a hat trick in thirty six minutes. Unreal. Uh, just absolutely dominant. There was nothing really from the Fijians. Leone Nakarawa got given a yellow card and he was captain that game. Um, what else have I got around? I've got more notes written down here, sorry. Uh, Tokiahu uh, got a double in the second in the second half. Uh, ben Barrett came off the bench. He kind of struggled off the tee for the most part, but I mean, still got a convincing win. He's never, Nico- he's never been amazing off the tee, Bowden, has he? He's never been... True. But um, yeah, he's never been Rico U- Re- yeah, Rico Ioane, Will Jordan, Shannon Frizzell, all on the scoreboard as well, and just a convincing win and great end for the summer series for New Zealand. And yeah. hopefully, to uh, go back on to what we me and Sean discussed last week, it would be nice to see Fiji and maybe Japan in the rugby championship going forward because they play, I mean, when they've got regular tier one competition. You could tell that they're up for it, and it does yeah. help. That it helps them as well, and it will benefit them I in think, the long haul. I think but... it'd be great to see because they're both obviously. I know Japan is now officially a tier one nation, but Fiji's always nearly been a tier one nation. They'll, they'll beat any tier. Like you never go going into Fiji game. Oh, we're going to smash it. We're always a bit like uh, we could lose today. Yeah. It's Fiji. You just don't know. So I think having them there, regular first team rugby, they get wins. They they would get wins. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, Simeon, I was just going to ask you, I don't know if you saw, but there was a lot of controversy after the New Zealand Fiji game for Severis Murray. You might have seen the Severis, his third try. Mm-hmm. Apparently, Fiji weren't set in time. It was something very similar to England against Wales back in the Six Nations. I don't know if you heard about that, Simeon. I, I haven't actually heard about or seen it, but if it's a it's referee's perception that one it is what the referee deems is getting set. If a referee said how to chat and he believes they've had a long enough chat. You crack on, like if a ref says it, you go. Just it doesn't matter. There's nothing in law to say the referee can't say, "Go on, crack on." Because it it ha- and no one so spoke about it, but it happened to Italy against the Ireland. They had three seconds to set, and everyone was complaining about yeah. England's ten. So it's like it's just referee perception. It's you don't need to spend ten minutes talking. You can just be set and go do this, do this. Just talk along the line. It, it's something which doesn't annoy me. Like I'll take the time. Like, especially at the moment of everyone getting back into rugby at grassroots level, like, we'll take the time to let people do it. But if I was reffing that, like, fair enough, you're an international team, you should know what you're doing. You don't need to talk about it for 20 minutes, do you? Simple yeah. as that. But you... I've not seen it. Like, it could be, it could have been, um, it could have been a bit dodgy, but I've not seen it. So, from what you've said, it was just referee perception. Referee yeah. cracks on. To um to avoid something like this in terms of it being not unfair, but, like, if, you know, if the referee asks to go and talk, that for a captain to talk with the players, for it to be more level do you think that either the, the referee should have the clock off for a few seconds or should there be like a, a time limit let's say 30 seconds to speak and then I, the- 30 seconds so you only need 10, 10 seconds to get the thing across i mean recently they i've just said i like i had a thing last week i went talk to your teams i i said to it like you went to like two players and make sure and then they spoke across the line because they knew what was happening like you they knew what was wrong so it's a bit like you just you're playing international rugby you know what you're doing wrong the captain's the chat shouldn't really be a thing. Like, yes, the yellow card warning is a different story. So then it should maybe be time off, go have 30 seconds, calm down. That's what I would personally do. Mm. But when it's just like, be better at the rucks, well, you know, 
you know that you've given away five rucks for off feet, five penalties for off feet. Just you know, it, I annoys me that one. That's 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 not ref resource. That's just world rugby or just how it's been ref for years. It's just yeah, I I just, I just don't like it. Yeah, Mur- Murray, did you um did you see that in the game? Yeah, I know what you're on about. Um, uh, just kind of going right, go and talk to your team, and like, very similar. Just kind of like plinking you miss it, and I'll just take Simeon's word on it as referee's perception. Like, I don't agree with it, but I see it because that's like twice this year, mm. and I, I don't know, I didn't like it, but I didn't like the England Wales one when it came out. Um, yeah, I watched. I think it was Squid Rugby done it and proper broke it down and you could actually see like Anthony Watson walking away which tells you that the cl- the team is reset and yeah. Just, yeah it was yeah so again just what Simon said referee perspective but yeah I mean if, that know, consist- if, that, if that's twice now you ask for consistency in refereeing at least it's consistent well, yeah. consistent balls off aye yeah <laughs> yeah I, I know you might not agree with it but it's consistent you can't argue with consistency yeah that's fair yeah, if he's if he's if the ref is refing by the law, you know, you, at the end of the day, you can't you can't. Uh, but regardless of whether you, you agree with it or not, you can't uh, you can't argue with the law. So that's uh, I suppose referees finally. Yeah, grand. Yeah, yeah. Um, so Australia, they won, ended up winning the test series against France, yes. thirty three thirty. So that was the third test. Um, Simeon, did you get to see this game? Yes, I did watch uh, some of this one, and we'll come to the red card in a wee bit, but um. Fair play, Australia. They 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 weren't looking good until they had the red card. Oddly enough, I know we conceded straight after, but that kind of kicked them into gear. And went, we need to win this thing. And you know what? You can't argue winning a game when you're 75 minutes on a red card. These days, red cards don't always affect the game that much. You're so used to training without players, like they train with like a man down. It is kind of just a standard, but no, fair play, Australia. They were clinical. They were good. France, being France, not being the most disciplined team as always. But from a French perspective, they have, I can't remember the pronouncer's name, but the fullback, the one who was playing for Pepinion, they have found a real gem who's going to push Doulon for fullback because he could have missed. Yeah, the whole test series. And it's one kick the whole test series. Like, fair play. They have found a real gem. And there will be some big clubs looking to sign him, I can call it now. Yeah. Murray? Uh, speaking of uh, gems, but on the Australian side, keep this boy in Australia, Noah Wolosio. He made his debut at the start of the series. He swatted every kick, known to man, in this game. He scored a try. He got the winning, the Test Series uh, penalty with a minute to go. It's unreal. He's like 19, 20 years old. Just keep him in Australia. Do not let any of the big European clubs or Japan or whatever lure him away because he is a fundamental going forward for Australian rugby. And you know what? They need a new good 10. They do need a good new consistent 10. I think having... I'm not going to give a full squad because we need to re-evaluate the Australian team. But all I'm saying is have Noah Lolasio at 10 and have James O'Connor at 12. Well, as captain, I think James O'Connor has completely redeemed himself. He, he got too big, too quick when he was younger. He made a big European move. His life kind of spiralled out of control. He cleaned his act up, got given a chance to go back to Australia. He's then captain the Reds to their first uh, Super Rugby title in like a decade or something like that, get him the Australian captaincy. I think he deserves it. And it's nothing against Michael Hooper. He's a fantastic captain. But the perfect redemption story. I, I do like that. how Hooper talks to referees. I just on a mini referee talk there. <laughs> he was so calm and collective. And he'll always ask, he won't argue back, but he'll ask the question well to put a doubt in the referee's mind. Obviously, that's the thing captains need to do. Um and he'd have good banter with a ref, which oh, I say now, a, re- a captain with good banter will always be my good books the whole game. <laughs> Don't, no, that's uh, that's very fair. You've got to be on the referee's good books. Um, yeah, so from what I thought of that game, I thought that 
I think both teams would be pretty happy in terms of like obviously with France they lost the series, but I think just in terms of I think both teams played some excellent rugby and like the, you know really weren't afraid to um, tr- chuck the ball around, which was great. Um, and I think France are building some serious squad depth. Like you know the the ridiculous. Like, yeah, you mentioned Jaminet there, um, Simeon. Like he's only twenty two years of age. Like he's twenty two. Like I, like it's hard to believe, and he played so well. Like just listen out some names. So you have Creighton. He's from Bordeaux. He's only twenty four. Coolio. He's a scrum half. He was twenty three, and he was excellent. Um, yeah, he was a good night. The yeah. ten. Um, Calvin Cal- Cal- Carbonell, whatever his name is. He's too long. He's a good player. He's a good ten. Yeah, but even he was injured in the second test, and I think I think it was in the second test anyway. And Hastor, yeah. he he started in the third test, and he was he was pretty all right. He's twenty four, um, and then Pierre um, Louis Barassi at outside center, he scored uh, he scored a try. He's only twenty three as well. Like, and that's only some of the players. That's only a handful of those yeah. players in France have blooded. And like you mentioned, you know, Jaminet fullback, but and you were saying he might get ahead of um, Dula. Yeah. But then you have Boutier as well. And Tom- Thomas Ramos was the man of the match in the top 14 final. He's not getting a look in because of... Exactly. Like, it's, it's ridiculous. Just, oh, man. I like France. You'd love to be French right now, wouldn't you? <laughs> yeah. Like, you know, 2023 and beyond 2027, France are building serious from their academy structures upwards. They're building some serious players. Like, you know, so... Uh, and they keep him. And they're actually letting their French play. I've noticed a lot more in the top 14. They're playing their French players, mm. which he didn't do for ages. And that was the issue with French rugby. But now yeah. they're really playing their players. Yeah. Just, uh, just, just, just as you said that, Sim, I, I believe they've actually brought in some new rules. I don't know how recently, maybe in the last maybe five years, in terms of how many foreign players they can actually play or have on a team, kind of like they have in the MLR. But like, I think that's... That's good for France. Good for countries to keep hold of their players and give them top quality. Yeah, Murray, you're going to say something there. Yeah, just when you're on about how like crazy like these talented French players are and how young they are, Anton Dupont and Roman Antomac are 23 and 24 respectively as well. Like that's insane. Yeah. That's sick. <laughs> that is sickening. And if you look at French sides historically, they bring out like 11, 12. Very young players to start regularly for the te- uh, for the international team, and that's your squad for 10, 12 years. Yeah, and providing providing injuries and all that. But you a good clump of that would be the forefront or the spine of the team for the next 10, 12 years. And so the fact that we've just rattled off about eight, there you go. That's unreal. Yeah, but uh, nuts. Yeah, it's cr- it's crazy. But speaking of a Six Nations team, we have Wales, Argentina. So, I mean, you could look away now if you want. <laughs> what game? I don't remember it. No. Um, <laughs> Wales had a very interesting, I think, like with that, let's round off the summer series as a whole for Wales. Um, I mean, very briefly on the game, uh, you've got to remember, this is an Argentina team and the majority of the players are in the same who beat New Zealand. This was a good Argentina team. I think we're forgetting that. A lot of people were forgetting that. And it was a very, very young Wales team. There was nothing going past. I mean, you look at the lineup, there weren't many caps in there. I mean, fair play. Like France, Wales have blooded some players. And there are, and we've seen some good players. Like in all three games, I know this week, Argentina were just dominant. They were just holding it together. But the other, the previous two weeks, the Canada second test, the first test against Argentina even, we've got, I we've really got some good players. Disappointed to never see you on Lloyd. I don't know if he was injured or PVAC decided no, you're not playing. <laughs> but um you you've got you found some gems and they're coming up. Tom Rogers, the um winger had a stormer of a game against Canada and he played pretty well yesterday. Um you had Ben Carter, Will Rollins, those second row Wales is second row depth at the moment is Insane. I'll we'll come on to I'll come on to Adam Beard in a bit, but and the Terminator. But honestly, I think Wales are in a good place. We had a, I think we needed, I think we needed those Argentina games going into a very difficult, awesome series. We'll see what happens. You've got the Lions back, and you've got new players with squad depth. It, Wales are in a good place, and they might not come good till the World Cup. Like I could see it like struggling next year potentially, and then come with a vengeance in the World Cup. We'll just have to see. But 
It was yeah, we were in a good place. Wales is in a bit of like, okay, that was a all right summer. It was just good to see rugby back at the principality more than anything. A lot of people just happy to have rugby back in Wales. So yeah, I can't really call much more else it was. What do you guys think? I just want to say that I called it. I said if Argentina keep the discipline down to a minimum, and even when you were on last on the show, Simeon, don't be surprised if Argentina go full goal and hurt I, Wales. Yeah. Yeah, and I there, said it, didn't I? There's two points in the same game. They kept their discipline down to a minimum. And Nicolas Sanchez just kept ticking. People forget this. Nicolas Sanchez isn't one of the, like a Maverick 10 or a running 10. If he gets given the chance at goal, he points at goal. He will keep that scoreboard ticking over and ticking over until he might change it up a little bit and then be like, no, we'll change it and go for a kick for the goal, uh, kick for a corner, sorry. So, It'd be like five and one, like five kicks at goal, one kick for the corner. Sanchez is such a weird tech. He could he could literally be like your moulds of Finn Russell. Then he could also be Dan Bigger. He could be Marcus Smith. He could be Bowden Bow. Mark Sanchez is one of the most underrated tens, I think, ever. Just yeah, he's never been bad. He's always <laughs> good, isn't he? It? It's, it's I mean you every time I look and go, Oh god, Sanchez is playing. Like he's obviously one of the standout names on that Argentina sheet, and you just feel like Right. If he has a good game, we're buggered. Yeah, that's yeah, fair. That's so, a... uh, Sean, what were your thoughts on that? Um, I think Argentina played with a lot of pace, which I think Wales probably couldn't really handle. Um, and I think also kind of a lot of it, as you said, with Sanchez kicking goal, it came down to Wales' discipline. I think their discipline was probably probably left in the Yeah. We had a yellow card. Wales don't get cards. And like, I'm going to briefly just touch on that yellow Wales do not get cards, and Wales' the biggest thing for probably the last 10 years has been discipline is spot on. The yellow card, it was it was a yellow card. It was simple as that. He landed on his shoulder, he took him out of the air. It was just like we don't give yellows. It was and the handling errors were oh my, we were sat there in the pub or the clubhouse just going, we were counting the knock-ons. <laughs> it was so many. All I saw was knock-ons, it drove me nuts. Yeah, no, I'd say that is annoying as a Welsh fan. <laughs> yeah, that's why I've got Scotland top one this week, by the way. <laughs> um, I did have a Welsh top one when we were discussing before we recorded, but I felt a bit chunky in it, so I took it off. There you go. <laughs> there, you go. <laughs> there, there we go. <laughs> Murray, you're obviously uh, you're obviously eating like a forward since you've switched as well, are you? <laughs> I've, yeah, I've kind of been slacking. That's brutal. Thank you. Sean. Jesus. Jesus Christ. Sean. <laughs> Sean. <laughs> right. Like, guys, it, on body positivity, it is okay to be any shape or size. Rugby is for all people. Let's move on. Yeah. I'm not um, fat. I'll break the microphone. I'm not fat. God damn. <laughs> no, I, I do not mean that in, uh, in, in disgust, Jesus Murray. I apologize. <laughs> Spoiler, I hope spoiler, for, spoiler for episode eight. I will not be here because uh, body shaming will not be tolerated. So I'm out of here now. Hey, I, was, <laughs> I, I, was, I, was, I was. I mean, <laughs> I did just spend three days eating and drinking, and then I came back and my coach went, "You look like you put weight on." I was like, "I've been on holiday, man." Great. <laughs> Um, hey, look, Murray. I was just, I was just complimenting you on, you know, your transition into the four. That's uh, <laughs> they say, they say, they say. No, nah, I know you're only winding up, mate. I don't know, only do, you think, you, do you not think I've had a hard enough week with all the <laughs> hate and messages I've been getting on oh TikTok? Oh my god, Jesus! <laughs> when I was actually on my phone this week, I just had a hundred messages from Murray going, "I hate this person. I hate this person." <laughs> just honestly, like, I don't like. It's been so quiet. And most folk just kind of be like, yeah, cool, this has happened. I agree with this. I would have this player over this player. And I'd just go, yeah, cool. It's just my opinion at the end of the day. And I will hammer this home. I, like, we don't get paid for this. I don't get paid for TikTok. I, I just I voice think... my opinion. Piss off. <laughs> 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 um, like, oh, I don't get paid for this on either YouTube or Spotify or wherever else we are. I don't get paid for my TikTok. It's just my opinion. It means shit all at the end of the day. Oh, don't and worry. I mean, look at some of the pundits' opinions on the line squad this just, week. I mean, just some people. I think I got asked just before we go into our last game. Sorry, I'm kind of spiraling here, but nice, I got I got asked. I know, like, uh, from our good friend Kyle. Kyle asked me, 
was my overrated 15. I was like, right, okay, what's, I've got nothing to lose, let's just go for it. And I rattled them off, and most of them were like, yeah, cool. And three that have stood out for the most part that people are just not accepting or understand, like, they're just like not listening or just not accepting is Sam Underhill, um, Sexton, <laughs> James Ryan, you have one by chance? Uh, no, nobody better than I would on that one. Oh, good. And uh, my favourite, my bay, my future, oh. William Williams. <laughs> oh, Sam Walkerton's starting him, apparently. Jesus. I'm not even surprised at that. But yeah, no, like, I think my TikTok imploded because I said uh, Sam Underhill was overrated. And, right, don't get me wrong, Sam Underhill is a fantastic player. Of course he is. He's an international rugby player. Like, there he's at a certain level. But, People were thinking it's because I've been like I've been picking on him because he's been injured for the most part of the season. I've thought Sam Underhill has been kind of overrated, or no, not overrated, overhyped more than anything. He was he was very good in the World Cup. It was two and years he ago. Was very good. <laughs> yeah, he's not <laughs> really I mean? done much since the World Cup. That's but the issue. Somebody asked me when they were getting really heated about it. Um, can I name any back rower that I think is better than Sam Underhill? And I went, literally, literally every back row on that Lions squad. And then Jamie Ritchie. And Jamie Ritchie, yeah. To name yeah. a few. And this guy decided to not have any of that and tell me that Underhill is easily better than Conan. And I was like, okay, Conan's a bit questionable. I could, I could but take either or. The thing is, they're different positions. One's yeah, an eight, def- one's a seven. Yeah, exactly. But and speaking of number eight, who's who Sam Underhill is apparently better than as well is Tulipi Falato. I'm like, on yeah, what def- world? No, yeah, yeah, no, hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. But yeah, so uh, I don't get angry. I don't give anyone hate or anything like that. I just kind of go, yeah, cool. That's your opinion. That was mine. I explain why each every single pick that I do, regarding if it's over, uh, overrated, underrated, combined fifteen, dream fifteen, whatever, whatever I do on TikTok, I explain each pick and what, like, and position and why. And this person decided to take a U-turn on it. I don't know if you guys have seen it. I've definitely messages about it, and it was oh, <laughs> you've got a bit. Uh, yeah, a bit salty because Scotland never got past a, qu- a quarter final. Like, well, you're wrong. They got to the 1991 semi final. Should have been the 2015 semi final, but we're not discussing that. Yes. And uh, apparently, uh, I died quick because uh, Rugby Will, our friend Will, Rugby yeah. Will 6, I think it is. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Rugby Will 6, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So Will came on. I didn't ask him to. He just hopped on and went, mate. If you're going to like criticize somebody, look at all the facts first and just left it at that. So I was like, cool, Boom. thank you, mate. Boom, and done. on that, the Lions versus the Stormers. Sean. Sure. You're well. <laughs> yeah, just uh, reco- while I recover now, just uh, <laughs> for after that. Um, no, look, I think it's a, a solid win for the Lions. I think um, probably not. Um, yeah, not tested to the same amount, obviously, as South Africa A. And actually, just what I remember, just I'm just going to mention it, South Africa A lost to the Bulls 17-14 yeah. yesterday. <laughs> uh, yeah, so basically the world rankings now go Benetton, the Bulls, <laughs> South Africa, Lions. That, those are the rugby world rankings. You, you got that off the rugby guy. He made that okay. joke. I didn't see that. I just came up yeah. with that earlier. No, he, he, that. Made, he, made, he broke the news. That's how I found out. It was like so... The Bulls have beaten South Africa A, and South Africa A beat the Lions. But Treviso, uh, Benetton beat the Bulls in the Pro 14 final. Does that mean Benetton is better than the Lions in South Africa yes. and all that? Yes, of course, they are. Is. Of course, hundred yeah. <laughs> percent. Yeah, but uh, all, all jokes aside, uh, great game. What a lot! Great last game before the test. The infinite handful of players putting their hands up. For that test side, look how in decade man of the match performance, like nobody was stopping him. He was absolutely phenomenal. That was the best hooker performance on tour. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, even though they didn't score, I felt 
Duhan van der Merwe, absolute nuisance on the wing, just making insane amount of meters. Yeah, and, he, I thought he played decent, like. And does the fact that it still takes two, three defenders to stop him or bring him down, unreal. And you know what? Let's all just talk about him. The golden boy. He got his first start. Marcus Smith. What a debut. What a way to get yourself into that Lions jersey. Unreal. Can't say anything more than that. He didn't <laughs> put a foot wrong, did he? Didn't didn't miss a kick. Didn't didn't put a foot nope. wrong. Okay, still done. Um, can we talk about the um my absolute cult hero who proved everyone wrong on tour this tour so far though? Proceed. Adam Beard. Yes. You all criticized him. He hasn't done a thing wrong in the lineup and he is Proving himself a very good ball handler and a nuisance in the ruck. He hasn't I done a thing wrong. He was in my underrated 15 because after the overrated madness, I got asked to do an underrated. And number four was Adam Baird. I was like, he has silenced everyone I mean, in the last that's three a, weeks. This has been his, I, I truly believe this has been the best rugby he's ever played. He's always been great for the Wales and always great for the Osprey. But I've never gone, oh my God, Adam Baird, until now. <laughs> And it's like, and I, I love Johnny Hill. I'm not Johnny Hill. I'm Johnny Gray. I just don't, I just don't see Johnny Gray putting that massive because people just expected him to be there. He wouldn't have worked as hard as Adam Beard has to go and look at me. I deserve to be here. And he, and he has proven everyone wrong. I think, I think if Johnny Gray was there, Johnny Gray would put in a shift and say, I deserve oh, to be here. No, yeah, but, but the I fact, think Adam, I think Adam when Beard. Adam Beard got called up. Myself included, I said it was a lazy pick because he was Welsh, and you know what Gats has done previ- in previous tours. And you know what? He he silenced me instantly, put in a hell of a shift against the Sharks in the first game when the, ga- the game was all in disarray. It was on, it was off. He played the full 80 minutes. Unreal. So, Adam Baird, you've definitely proved me. And that's what I want with any player that plays rugby professionally. Prove me wrong. And do you know what is on the world's second rows? Alan Wynne Jones, what a 27 minutes. Unreal. He offloaded. He was Fijian. He, honestly. <laughs> he, but did, he, he was, I mean, obviously, I was just sat in Wales and he came on, and all we all said was, we just want to play a camp for Alan Wynne Jones. All we wanted to do was just watch <laughs> Alan Wynne Jones. And it was amazing. And we couldn't get our eyes off him. He was incredible for 27 minutes. He's really put his hand up for that. Started for the captaincy again. Yeah, Sean, yeah. what's your uh, last thoughts? Um, no, I think you said it there. Like Marcus Smith was brilliant. Um, I thought just from looking at top, uh, Daly played a little bit like a playmaker, which is nice to have a kind of yeah. different. I like it. Yeah, yeah. I think he and I think Daly kind of fits that mold because he well, except for that blunder of a pass he made against South Africa. Hey, do you remember he's, he caught the ball? They kind of like yeah, like kind of <laughs> dropped forward. Yeah. Oh yeah, I even I saw that one. That one, yeah. And the commentator said it's, he didn't mean it. Of course, he didn't mean it. <laughs> what do you mean? Well done. I mean, the most unfortunate. I think we should have an award ceremony. So far, the most unfortunate commentary on tour was the Sharks game, and I don't know if you guys saw it, but the commentator just went, "You know, Vincent Cox, the thir- uh, thirteen, was the Sharks." Mm, yeah, yeah. And yeah. the commentator he scored, and the commentator just went, "And Cox in," and he just left it at that. <laughs> <laughs> oh god you're so immature it's unreal yeah <laughs> <laughs> um, I forgot what was going- oh uh, just speaking on Alan Jones's amazing unheard of return yeah. I did a little jokey TikTok earlier um, it was a Conor McGregor thing like you should have killed me when you got the chance now I'm going to take you and your effing team down and I'm like that's just perfect like, that fits so well <laughs> <laughs> so- it was yeah Honestly, it was great. Um, yeah, so, I think it was a great game. I just a really enjoyable game. Zamet scored a great try from Marcus Smith. Yeah, yes. I Everyone agree. in the club house just Zamet's just so loved in Wales. It was just great. Can't yeah. go wrong. I met his parents. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I bumped into his parents at the Lions Japan game, which was weird, but they're nice enough people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so just quickly, just in the Rugby Europe Championship, Portugal had a 49-31 victory over Russia, which is a pretty big win for a lot of people who, who wouldn't really yeah. watch. Yeah, that's a big win for Portugal. Considering Russia won the World Cup. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah like, that's a good one. 
Yeah, like and it was well done, Portugal. <laughs> It was it was in Russia as well. Like I didn't think that you know going you know playing at home in Portugal, you're like okay, you, they could put up an upset. But going to Russia and getting that big of a win, that's class for Portugal. So Portugal are now second in the rugby championship behind Georgia. Only a few weeks ago, they were in third. They were behind um, Russia. So and that's very important in terms of this year's rugby champion or rugby Europe championship and next year, the points go for World Cup qualification. So currently, Georgia are in pole position to qualify as Europe one. And then the runner-up of the Rugby Europe Championship, they qualify as Europe 2 for the World Cup. And then the third place finisher of the Rugby Europe Championship, they go into a final qualifying tournament, which is all the teams yeah. from all around the world. So yeah. um, that's a pretty big win for Portugal. And, and I'm delighted for them, like, you know, because obviously... They've been in World Cups before. They have been in a World Cup. Like, yeah, 2007 was the last time, I believe, they were in the World Cup, I think. Well, let's hope we can see... Port- I'd love to see an odd team there, so let's hope to see them. <laughs> yeah, no, it'd be great for them. Um, and then just quickly moving on uh, for the into Major League Rugby. So New York had a 32 to 35 loss against Nola Goals this weekend. I was Ooh. I was very dis- but it actually turned out positive because this was a crucial game to decide. It was the last game of the regular season for both these teams. So whoever won, basically, it was kind of like it looked like okay, whoever is going to win qualifies for the semifinals because the other three spots were already um, were already covered. So. The Giltinis, they're playing against uh, Utah in the uh, Western Conference semifinal. And then in the Eastern Conference, it was basically the winner of this match um, to play um, against Atlanta in the other, in the Eastern semifinal. But it turn, as it turns out, New York actually got two bonus points, which what they needed. So New York actually play Atlanta in the semifinals. And those semifinals are going to be on next week. So yeah, it's New York. Yeah, it's New York against Atlanta. Go. Go New York. <laughs> yeah. uh, ben Foden, actually, he got a try in the weekend. And hey. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then one fella who, who's been a breakout star for New York this year is Benjamin Bonasso. He's uh, number seven. He's I really hadn't heard of him, to be honest. He kind of came out of nowhere. He's been brilliant all season for Rooney. So yeah, New York against Atlanta next week. And then the Giltinis against um, Utah Warriors in the other semifinals. So those should be two. Pretty decent games. So, yeah. Exciting. Yeah, happy days. Also, just before we quickly go back to Lions, um, if you want to learn any more about MLR, please check out an, our interview with Scott Ferreira off the Rugby Ran, also known as the big guy. I knew nothing. I I put my hands up in that interview. I knew nothing about MLR. I think I can name five uh, USA players across the board. So, fifth, men's 15, women's and sevens. And yeah, and Scott definitely filled in the blanks for me. We didn't mesh very well with his <laughs> Northern Hemisphere clubs, but we'll just leave it at that. But definitely go and check it out. It was, yeah, yeah, great, and, great um, lad. Just on that game, Simeon, you might be interested to hear was that JP Doyle was actually the referee of the New York game, and there was three yellow cards and a red card in that game. And <laughs> oh, <laughs> I might have, a re- I might have a watch of that game. To be honest, I, I love JP Doyle. I, to be fair to him, he, he just got snubbed off by the RFU and mm. he's having a fantastic time out in America and he's really leading the way to teaching American referees who obviously aren't in the international scene and I think he's doing a fantastic job out there and MRL will love him. MRL, but the Americans love a Brit. They love an English Brit, don't they? So there we go. <laughs> he's have, Irish. Have, have JP Dull, he's Irish. Man. He's Irish. <laughs> JP Dool's English. No, he's not. He's Irish. It he, he was the RFU. Yeah, yeah, but he is actually Irish. He moved over is there. He, I didn't know that. <laughs> Where is this from? I'll forgive you there, Simon. I'll forgive you just this once. I'll forgive you, okay? <laughs> so uh, I did not know he was Irish. I always just thought he was just English. So fair enough. <laughs> right, lads. We're in countdown mode now. We are now, mm. as of recording, we are six days away from the first test. Lions versus South Africa, not South Africa A or B. Well, it or... was South Africa, wasn't it? But, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And officially, first test this week, match day 23. I've written mine down. I imagine you two have written yours down. Should we well. go, like, front row, second row, flankers? Yeah. In, yes. All together, so we got it all topical? Please do not copy my team this time. We did this a lot. <laughs> when, the first time we did the Lions squads. We had all but one. I don't think it was nine where it was different, was it? Or something like that. Mm. And um, oh, can we do with bench as well, just so a, for context? Yeah, yeah, ma- yeah, yeah, 100%, 100%. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, shit. No, I dropped my book, sir. 
Right. Well, Murray, do you want to kick us off with your front row? Yes, I will. Uh, so, at loose head, Rory Sutherland. At hooker, I mean, he def- I-, I already had him penciled in, but after uh, Saturday's performance, it's a no-brainer, what cow and Dickey. And for t- Hill Dog, somewhere, wherever that is. <laughs> and at tight head, Tyg Furlong. The jukebox himself, the hits will just keep coming. I'm starting Tyg Furlong. Sean? Okay. Yeah, yeah, there we go. Sean? Um, in my front row, I have Wyn Jones. Hooker, I, to be honest, I wasn't too sure, so I put in Ken Owens. Because um, I, I wanted to put Owens on the bench, but I don't think he's really a bench player. Um, yeah. And then Furlong at three. That's fine. Um, it's all good, it's all good front row. I've gone Wynn Jones at prop. I think he proved himself in the South Africa A game, holding up the South African scrum. You can't go wrong. Mm-hmm. Luke Almdicky, yeah. turnover king. And the salmon himself, Tyler Furlong. The salmon himself. <laughs> there we go. Second row. And as the most obvious one, it was the most talked about. I've gone for Maro Toji. And I'm putting the Terminator straight back in with the captain's armband, Alan Wynn Jones. Fair enough. Yep. Sean? Uh, I had Ian Henderson and Alan Wynn Jones in the second row. Oh, that's good. I like that. Yeah. Um, I go in Alan Wynn Jones got a got I think he proved himself for 27 minutes. <laughs> and I if Alan Wynn Jones will just be good uh, and captain, rightly so. Uh and then I don't think Atoji's impressed at all on tour. I think he's not done anything. So I've put either Henderson or Adam Beard because on form and performance, Adam Beard. Yeah. Fair enough. I was actually going to say, if you've not picked Ian Henderson with the amount of hype and messages you've sent me over him, it'd be mad. <laughs> and after to... being in Belfast this week. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, moving on to the back row. This back row, I have been banging on about this since since we started, uh, the three of us started talking. At six, Tom Curry. On the open side at seven, Hamish Watson. And at number eight, Premiership Player of the Year, Sam Simmons. Yeah, fair. I I love Falatau and I love Jack Conan. I just think Falatau is he's not not played bad. He's just not played as well as we all want Falatau to play in this tour. Yeah, Jack Conan's done all right. I wouldn't say no to Jack Conan, but I'm an, I'm playing with my heart here. Extra Chiefs fan, back Simmons. Sean, what's your back row? I went with Tyg Byrne at six, Hamish Watson at seven, and I went with Falatau at eight. But like likewise, as with Falatau, I, I kind of he hasn't kind of shown as what he no, normally is. So I was kind of apprehensive putting him there. So and then yeah. obviously we'll say our bench, but my two bench players are well, yeah, they're kind of interchangeable. They are kind of very interchangeable with Falatau. Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> um, I got. I think Tyg Burns had a fantastic tour. I don't know why you, yes. you have him. I I just have him in. I think he had a great tour. Watson. Not put a foot wrong, and I'm gonna actually go against some Welshness and go with Simmons because I think he scored a try, and I think he's just he's exciting, isn't he? And the South Africa won't know how to deal with him because he's exactly. so unknown. Exactly. Exeter Chiefs that. boys, Exeter Chiefs all the way. Just <laughs> yeah, right. I'm leaving Wales this year. It's fine. Um... <laughs> Great. Uh, scrum hut. Are we doing half backs then? Yeah, go half backs. Yeah. yeah. So halfbacks, I've gone for the man that is put played out of his skin in that nine jersey. People were doubting him when he got called up in the initial squad. Hasn't gone a foot wrong. Played eighty minutes when he wasn't meant to. Unreal, Ali Price at scrum half. At ten, I've gone for Maverick or Maverick Apprentice. I really want Finn Russell to start, and I will explain why. Like Simeon said with Sam Simmons, South Africa won't know what to do with Finn Russell. Dan Bigger is very cool, come and collect it. It's not a bad thing. It is a fantastic thing because Dan Bigger does really well in that role. But if you really want to catch the South Africans off guard, especially in the first test, to get that mentality, one-upmanship, Finn Russell to start, or after the amazing game he had, I have got Marcus Smith. Either or. But... Just spoiler, Dan Beggar's on my bench. So if Finn starts, Dan's on the bench. Marcus starts, Dan's on the bench. So it would be Marcus or Finn that would be dropped altogether. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Sean? Um, I have Murray at nine and Bigger at ten. 
I think Ali Price has been better than him, but I'm, you know, I think Murray is just, he's very good tactically, but also Ali Price is a lot quicker. So that was a kind of a tough one. But yeah, Murray. Um, I'm going Price. And honestly, I'm caught. I explained it in a TikTok yesterday. You have, um, I agree with it. I think Russell, I don't, they've not really said anything. I'm, I'm just going to go with Smith because I don't think he'll be fit. Um, South Africa won't have a clue. They, they just won't have a clue with Marcus Smith. If he's going wrong, shift bigger on off the bench and bigger will calm the game down like he did when Anscom used to be at 10 for Wales. It, simple as that. I know it's a big call and I don't know if it'll happen, but yeah. And then Ali Price on form nine. We just play on form players on form nine. There we go. Yeah, fair. All great choices. All valid points as well. And I uh, think this might be one of the hardest now. Centres. Centres. Nobody has put a foot wrong. Bobby Henshaw, Bundyaki, Chris Harris and Elliot Daly have all played phenomenal. I know people question Bundyaki for being on the tour, but he proved everyone And Daly. Daly made sense of once it, like once the, the yeah. storm calmed, it made sense. But my God, he is... I don't know. I discussed this with a friend. I don't know what this Lions jersey does to him, but he just shows up, pulls stuff out of the hat that... He doesn't do all year, like just for example, the like the volleyball pass to Duhan last week. Where where did that come from? I'm not against it. The, no. the obvious, obviously the long range kicks very beneficial. Um, he's been fantastic in defence as well, but just for this, I think now that he's fully fit, I've gone for Robbie Henshaw and Chris Harris as my centre pairing. That was the one I wanted penciled in. When Robbie Henshaw got hurt, I put Daly and Harris as it because I feel that Daly definitely did earn his stripes on this Lions tour. But now that Henshaw's fit, makes sense to have the best Northern Hemisphere centre back starting and one of the best defensive centres in world rugby. It just makes sense for me. Yeah. Sean? Yeah, no, mine was the exact same. Henshaw and Harris. So, yeah, can't disagree there. <laughs> Um, I I've gone Harris Daly. I just really enjoy him together. I think I I, I know Hogg's a good long range kicker, but he's nothing on Daly. I in my yeah. opinion, like, he, Hogg will miss quite often from long range when Daly does not. Yeah, at altitude and Joe, I think it's Joe Berg in it. He will kick that sixty five meters. No, no issue. Yeah, so yeah. I, I've just I, I I really when they tried Harris at twelve and Daly, I just enjoyed it. So yeah, Daly, Harris Daly. Why not? Mm. Yeah, and then, I was just going to say, aren't they playing? Are they playing all the tests in Cape Town now? I don't know. I, I, think, we'll they might have, I think they might have moved all the games to Cape Town, from what I've heard. So no, no well, more Joburg. I don't think. I mean, well, if they have, oh, then some well, ideas flawed. Then <laughs> still, you still, it's still my point. Still my point stands on that. Yeah. <laughs> well, he's great at altitude kicking. We're not on altitude. We're at sea level. There you go. Hey. <laughs> No, um, still that all valid points. Great picks, especially Sean's centre pair. Same as mine. <laughs> this uh, one might get interesting. Back, back three. three. This, this one is the easiest one I've read down for me, in my opinion. He's uh, without a doubt. I've gone for the two and four wingers. I mean, four games apiece. I think they scored thirteen tries between them. Duhan van der Merva and Josh Adams, and at the back. He only played twice. He started both the games. He captained both games. Stuart Hogg. Unreal. Yeah. Sean? Yeah, no, mine is actually the exact same. I actually wasn't... <laughs> Come I on! Actually, I actually, to be honest, <laughs> until you said do have Van Merva there, I actually left him out, but I, then I was thinking, like, why did I leave him out? Like, why? And so I was like, I, I had to put him in. Like, I wasn't going to not put him in. So, <laughs> yeah, same, exact same. I cannot pick between Zamet and Durham. Zamet has... I know Doom scored me. He only scored two more tries, but Zamet hasn't put a foot wrong either. Zamet has played well, and he's just shown his pace. Yeah. Um, I put Zamet down just because I thought he, he just impressed me. I, I just think he's been good the last two games, and I just yeah. And he, when it, we saw when he gets his pace going, when he can just run in, he was jogging. Uh, obviously, yeah. Josh Adams has to start and Hog, but Doom Zamet. I wouldn't be disappointed either way, but I just think yeah. I'd put Zamba down. Just I think he'll get on. It works well. We saw in Wales, they work well with um, Adam, Zamet. They know each other. I, yeah. on, purely on that, I'm just going with that. I know you could say Hogg and Doom, but yeah. 
Yeah, that's fair. I mean, all valid points. I mean, I just think, like like you said, Simeon, two hand starts, fantastic. Low three semi starts, amazing. And mm. as not, I'm not even if Anthony Watson was to start, I wouldn't be disappointed. Anthony Watson's an incredible like player, well, isn't he? So yeah, yeah, just not Liam Williams. I don't think he will. He failed, even on he the failed a he, he failed a HIA anyway, so it doesn't matter. So boo hoo. Oh, there you go. He's done. I hope he is actually all right. I'm not being. A yeah, yeah, yeah. I genuinely hope he is okay, but no. <laughs> so Murray, what about your bench? Yeah, so I'm just going to rattle off the whole bench for you. Uh, 16, Ken Owens. It was a toss-up between him and Kevin Dickey. One had to go on the bench. Ken Owens was on the bench. Uh, 17, Wynn Jones. Again, he's played phenomenal. Hasn't done a foot wrong. I just I want Roy Sullivan to start. And yeah, same for them. Uh, 18, Kyle Sinclair. He's played phenomenal with the chance he's been given. Um, 19... I've gone for Tigburn or Adam Baird as a toss up. Um, I've put Connor. I've got Connor Murray on the bench. I've got Dan Bagger on the bench. Uh, Lewis Free Summit and Anthony Watson. There you there go. go. I've kind of done like a four-four split there, but it's not great. But I think Tigburn has enough in the tank to cover both and. If needed, Tom Curry could easily slot in at number eight if needed as well. So there we go. Yeah, um, fair enough. Sean, Sean, what's yours? Yep. So I had uh, Luke Cowan Dickey, uh, Rory yep. Sutherland, Kyle Sinclair, Maro Toje, either Jack Conan or Sam Simmons, and then Ali Price, Finn Russell, and then Elliot Daly. Yep. Fair. Yeah, I'm going. I'm going six two. I would normally never say six two, but it's a good idea. But I just think we need. I just think the four. It's South Africa. You just need forwards. Um. So I go. Uh, Sutherland, Ken, uh, Furlong, again, Adam Beard or Henderson, one or the other. Um, yeah. And then on the other one, Toje or Laws. When Laws has been in, he's played well. So Toje, Laws, um, Toje just hasn't impressed me, Toje, but he's good, <laughs> isn't he? On, like, on reputation. Um, then you go... I, Curry on the VD. I'm a bit conflicted. I mean, the VD, when he's had the chance, he's played well and I just, he can cover so many positions. I'm going Curry the VD. Um, nine, Gareth Davis, because I Connor Murray just annoyed me. He's done nothing right this tour. And Dan Bigger. And I think if Bigger had to, he could cover fullback or centre. I just, if he had to, I just think, yeah. Or oh, because you've got Daly on the team as well. You can cover oh. so many positions. I just think Dan Bigger. There you go. I'm a, I must count it. I never did a 4 4 spot. I did a 5 3 spot. Yeah. Ken Owens, Wynn Jones, Kyle Sinclair, yeah. Adam Baird, Tyg Byrne, Conor Murray, Dan Bigger, Anthony Watson. There we go. But Or LA Daily. I was right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Fair enough. Oh, um, yeah. So we've each named our Test 23s for the Lions. So, Simeon, I believe you've a fair bit to talk about in terms of refereeing decisions over the past couple well, of weeks. Well, because someone was away last week, they missed three red cards to talk about. So that's... <laughs> Um, we don't have images for you tonight, so I'm just going to try and describe them as best as I can. We'll start off with the previous week. So we're going back a week just because I thought they were, we needed to, we need to cover them. Lions v Sharks. Um, Sharks player went on the floor, stuck his elbow right into the Lions player's head. Red card. Do I need yep. to explain more? He pleaded guilty. No one batted an eyelid. It was at force. Can't do that. It's rugby. Opinion, anyone? Just- even I described that better. I don't believe in a ref. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> Opinions agree. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Can't throw, can't throw elbows. Don't care who it is. Yeah. Simple. Yeah. True. Yeah. Um, Wales, Argentina. Um, so the, I think it was a fullback, high tackle Wales player, shoulder to head. There was a bit of a question of was he lowered? He was lowered a bit. But the referee made a really, really good point, and it's made me stuck with my, me all week on a few of these things. He had a clear line of sight. He had so much time to know he could have gone low, and he decided to go high enough that he made shoulder to head contact, and therefore that mitigation of lowering wasn't enough because he had the clear line of sight. Obviously, shoulder to head, red card. And not enough mitigation was the correct decision. Was really well spoken through, uh, lads. Yeah, fair. Yeah. Just when you, when you said it there, 
He had all the time in the world to like almost back out of it, kind of like the Xander Fagerson incident with Wales and the Six Nations. Yeah, totally agree. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> there we go. Somebody, Dogs are on form, so I think Lukey agrees. Um, <laughs> then we had, right, now this one obviously was controversial. We had Wales Island, obviously, Sean, you were there. And I remember seeing it, you posted a TikTok at the time going, you weren't really sure from all the angles you saw. Um, I was sat at home uh, watching it on my tablet. To me, I get what people were saying. It didn't look harsh. It did look a bit harsh, but there wasn't enough lowering and he still made shoulder to head and it was there was never an attempt to go low. And this is what we've, sp- we've spoken about this ever since we started the podcast. Yep. Don't make an attempt to go low. You hit the shoulder to the head, you're getting red. Yep, Simple agreed. as that. Um, obviously, the force wasn't ridiculously high, but it was still force in it. He just If he went a bit lower, it was one angle looked like shoulder to shoulder. Excuse the pun of Ireland. Um, <laughs> at least not some poster, because I've been playing to Sean all week. Um, um, but no, I, it was, but from the angles I saw really well, it was direct head contact. So simple as that, red cards. Sean, yep. your opinion on that? Because obviously you did see it live. Um, no, I like I, at the time I, I did think it was um, it was kind of a bit harsh, but obviously I couldn't see it, couldn't see all the angles, and obviously um, it was sh- contact to the head. But I, you said it there, like if a player a player has to make an attempt to, to go low uh, if he doesn't want to get a card, so I think that was just just poor on. on, <laughs> on yeah, the- it was what it was. Um, and. Uh, so obviously, I think what we're going into is probably the most controversial of this week's was France, Ar- um, Australia. Now, this was a very complicated one because we talk about line of sight and Corabiti did have line of sight. Mm. So we talk about that. So there was very much line of sight. Now, my initial thoughts were um, red card and I don't want to. And I have looked back and I do say yellow now. I will take nothing away from the referees in this game. I, they spent a good two minutes. They brought all the referees in, TMO, and they all discussed it, and they came to the conclusion of red. There is complete... I, I Like, my opinion, I'd say yellow. And if I saw that on a Saturday, I would have given that a yellow. But I can't argue with them giving it a red because he did make direct shoulder-to-head contact. There was a lot of mitigation that he was lowering, but he did have a clear line of sight. You could give him yellow, you could have given red. There were going to be people who complained either way. Um, it was just one of those ones that no one's going to be happy at that. But it, it was hard, but he made shoulder to head. So he was probably how the laws are today. And if that sets a standard, so say that set a standard that that is a red card. If that is now a red card always, fair enough. You can't argue anymore with that. If they keep up the consistency, what did you guys think? Because obviously that was controversial. Um, I thought it was a red, just like you said, it did shoulder to head. As soon as, as it doesn't matter if how much force there is in it for me, um, I feel like I'd be a very strict ref. Um, <laughs> as soon as, like just because like you said it since we started the show, if it, shoulder to head contact, that's a red card, and that's all, that's all it's for me, like regards how many angles a TMO has. Or how slow it is, or if you're playing at a normal speed, shoulder to head, red, done. Next, Sean. Yeah. Um. No, actually, I didn't. I wasn't seeing the game live, so kind of just like the USA one, I didn't see all the angles. But just as you were saying it there, the reason <laughs> on the highlights, obviously they're made by the Australian TV company, so they're only going to show the ones that make it not oh look like a red card. But I think I when I from what I saw, it looked like a yellow card to me. To be honest, it looked like just like a good hit. It just looked like he was. He was going in. Well, obviously, it was probably a yellow card, but like I didn't think it was a red. Like you know, it just looked like a good hit. You can even see on his back, his hand is literally wrapped around his nearly his waist, nearly the way he went. Yeah, in. It, it, that that's why that's why he went to yellow. And the French play, like he was holding his face. I watched the thing of the con, like frame by frame where the contact was. It was the contact zone was. Um, he hit the chin. It was neck chin the direct contact, and shoulder at the same time. So his whole just thing went like there. Yeah. Um, so obviously if that was higher up it'd easily be a red but it's just because of that lowering which was a bit like and the French player was low so that's why I did go yellow but again we've said it there one of you said red one of you said yellow I've kind of gone it's either way 
yeah. there we go. That's how that went. That's how that card went, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, and the last one I want to bring up, and this is nothing against Jakob Piper. From what I heard, he did a great job in the South African versus South, sorry, South African A quotation marks versus the Lions game. Um, there were just two things the referee team missed. Yes, it is harder to missing for that level, but things are missed. Um, and we had two things. We had um, shoulder boy himself, Owen Farrell, having his <laughs> arm tucked. A player just ran straight into, well, yeah, if he didn't make a tackle at all. He didn't wrap his arms. He made direct shoulder to head contact. Uh, you probably, you guys probably seen, I didn't put a TikTok on about it. Um I just saw it like a kind of as like a still like an image of it. It looked like it kind of like he was going high anyway. So that's, that's yeah. It, he was up. Farrell did not dip. He was just stood up like yeah. his shoulder like that. And the guy just went into his. We didn't even go into it. He just read. It was just in my head that was just a red card, and it was classic Farrell. Um, <laughs> and then Faster Clerk did the same. It was kind of someone came around the ruck and he just dropped his shoulder and went for someone in the head, which again was a red card offence so basically you've got shoulder boy 2.0 because if you remember a couple of weeks ago Faster Clerk did that in the Harlequins game he just shoulder yep. charged someone but he was too short to make it a red card so um, <laughs> I, I just yeah I, I just thought that was a red card someone commented um, when I said that was a red that it's refs like you with the issue or well, no because he's red carded someone because he's got shoulder to head so you know I mean if you want to go ref and be a ref where you've missed shoulder to head. I've, I've been in games where I've not seen the shoulder to head contact and everyone goes ballistic at you. Obviously, I've missed it and the ref's missed it there. If you want to be in that position, you crack on. But yeah, Murray, your thoughts on that? those interesting ones? Um, More the faff one. It's more, definitely a red. Like how that, like the fact that it was slowed down, it, yeah. Okay. Oh, so my, my question is because I didn't watch the game. Was that TMO? Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, right. They stopped the game. There might have been foul play. They zoomed it in, slowed it down, and Josh Navidi comes round the rock, like you said, and Fafta Clark just goes, yeah, nope. <laughs> yeah, and okay. it, slow, it slows it down. You see it zoomed in, shoulders, like it almost like squishes. Josh Navidi's face like it was that that was that much of a slow motion hit and Jacob Piper gave it a yellow so I'm like are you feeling okay that's definitely I, a red I mean he might have had his reasons there might be mitigation it's how the team talks so oh, I'm yeah. not going to criticise it but... African, maybe. <laughs> Ooh. I'm not commenting um, <laughs> I'm not, not commenting because it, it, it's a hard one I'm not commenting on with that um, but yeah I just think that was it on my last, what I've noticed picked up recently with my games, um, players are starting to go high again. I've given a lot of yellow cards for, uh, luckily for them, mitigated high tackles, which could have been reds if they weren't lower, um, if they were a little bit higher. So pl grassroots players, pl anyone who listening, get your tackles down because they're starting to creep up again. I don't know why, but and players are having a go at me for giving penalties and yellows for this. I'm like, it's how the game is refed these days. You've just got to learn. But I'm just saying, it might for any and the referees. Well, it's going to be a difficult few months obviously going back into the proper season now, and we're going to have to. Referees will hopefully, as a whole, be consistent and hold it down these high tackle rules. But we've just got to make sure. After a while, players will get used to it, and hopefully, we'll respond to it a lot better. But just keep your tackles down, people. Simple okay. as that. I can already feel I'm going to get a ref. It's going to be like, not by the book. That's fine. I'm going to get a dodge. I'm going to like, like a loose arm and I'm going to get yellow carded or red. And yeah, you're, I'm not going to take it well. Yeah. And it'll probably be me. <laughs> if, it's, if, 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 if I've deserved it, I've always, I think I've always been like this. If I've deserved, if I've done something wrong, then yeah, I'll, I'll own up to it. But if I like, if it's something daft, then off you go. But, no. Yeah. Do we have any quick? We didn't actually have a question last week. We forgot to put one out. <laughs> so we apologize. We apologize to our our fans. And I mean, we're on a bit of a longer one this week because I've just come and talked shit because I've missed a lot. <laughs> um, 
it, I get paid to talk shit, lads, for refereeing. It's out of job roles. It's the it's in the yeah, job description. Yeah, that, um, <laughs> right. So I don't have a name written down who asked the question, but the, we've kind of got a three and one question. So okay. it's who? So we'll go one by one. I'll, I'll say say them one by one so we can do it. So we don't get overthink it all. So firstly, who is the most overrated player? In current world rugby, so not ever. So he might have been good before, but on current form, who is the most overrated player? Sean, do you want to crack on that one? Yeah, that's that's a tough one. I, I don't like labeling players overrated because at the end of the day, you know, p- players are kind of just trying their hardest, and at the end of the day, it's their job. So it's, it's more overhyped. I think overhyped's a better description um, of it. Yeah, yeah, I think that's probably fair because overrated. I, I feel like it kind of seems very harsh on them, and I don't want to be yeah. harsh. On you, um, well, you see, I would say Owen Farrell, but he's not really hyped at all, you know. So, like, I don't see he, how he could be overhyped. I don't know. I, I find that that's a very tricky one. Um, I'm not sure. I'm just going to say Owen Farrell. Like, I think he, well, like, like and he just hasn't been in good form. I'll, I'll put it that way. You know, he just hasn't been at his best. So that's all I'm going to say. To be fair, I have seen people saying you should start the test series. I was a bit like, did you watch him against South Africa? Because, eh? I mean, I didn't, but I've watched enough clips of it. Yeah. Um, Murray, no, we're not asking me any more overrated right. because apart from Liam Williams, who is your no, opinion? The most I, was, I wasn't going to say that. I just oh. I've I gave out a fifteen. <laughs> who do you think is your most overrated or overhyped player currently? I mean, there's a whole fifteen on my TikTok. You can easily go and check that out. And um, abuse Murray some more if you like. And just yeah, just abuse me more if you if you really want to go at it. Um, no, but. I'm not going to say Liam Williams. I'm not going to be boring. I'm not going to say Sam Underhill because, holy shit, it's not worth the trouble. <laughs> Marco Vodapola, for me, is the most overrated player right now. He's He played all right in his last outing. He came off... I thought, quite... I thought Je- in fairness to him, I thought he had a good game Saturday. I thought he did. He came, yeah, he came off the bench strong against the Stormers, but that's it. That's all he's done in, like, four years. True. And I, I genuinely feel he is just holding a place... And most more with the England team, like Ben O'Bannell is not even getting looked at, and Marco Van Der is just sitting there. You're doing nothing, but mm-hmm. yeah, that's enough on that. Um, yeah, Marco Van Der don't give me hate for it. <laughs> um, for me and everyone who knows me loves me to say it on current form, James Ryan. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, yeah, you only that one's correct. I don't raise him at all at the moment I even think when he was doing good he wasn't really doing good it was no one in Leinster or Ireland was doing bad and he just happened to be young and everyone was like oh look he's young he's won everything yeah, yeah. he didn't do that much great he was good in the lineup, but that I, I just I, I don't and at the moment I mean he didn't even captain that well during yeah. his two captaincy roles he, he wasn't I mean yeah they had a good game against um, USA, but he just seemed off the pace to me a bit. I know he was injured before, but he seemed a bit off the pace, and his captaincy wasn't the best against Japan. So I just think Henderson and Byrne, you've got two much better second rows, and that's yeah. why they're above them on the line still. Yeah, just sure, that, obviously, uh, yeah, obviously you are Irish. Yeah, I was, so, yeah, I was just going to say that. Holy shit, Sean, you're Irish. Jimmy <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Greener Robbins, stay in the obvious. Uh, <laughs> Um, I, I actually I agree with you, Simeon, in terms of yeah, and James Ryan's form. He, he's he hasn't lived up to the billing, but I think that's also a bit of, you know, I think one thing that I'll you know I'll give the man is that I think, he, the, well, just like every other player, but I think he, he's had a lot of pressure being put on him by the media and by yeah, fans. no, that that does make sense. Yeah, because like when he came onto the scene, he was pretty good as a young fella. You know, when he burst first burst onto the scene. Um, and a lot of people were saying, oh, yeah, next Paul O'Connell, you know, next Ireland captain, you know, whatever. And then his first, it was a 23-odd games, he went undefeated between Leinster and Ireland caps or something. Yeah. Like, you know, but they just, lose. Leinster and Ireland just didn't lose. That was yeah, the thing. Pretty pretty much. Much. lost game. So. Yeah, so I think in that respect, I think he's, a lot of people, he has been hyped up, just probably that bit too much, you know, and he's probably, I don't know whether that's affecting him personally or not, but um, it's a pity for him because like, I think he still does have a bright career ahead of him. But yeah, currently I agree with you, Simeon. He's definitely off the pace as what's expected. Yeah. All right. So yeah, there we go. Good answers from us. Uh, next one, most oh, overhated players. Someone who receives 
too much hate in current world rugby. Liam Williams, from me personally. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, yeah, that's um, true. No, um, in world rugby as a whole. Yeah, crack on. Owen Farrell. I, I know I know he's arrogant and all that and <laughs> very smug, but I think what caught me off guard was when I went to the Lions versus Japan game and they're going through the squad announcement right before kickoff, and everybody, way, Ali Price, way, so on and so forth. And it's 22, Owen Farrell, and I agree, way, because he's on the team I'm supporting for the game. And majority of Murrayfield booed him out of that stadium, and I'm like, <laughs> he's on our team. Like, I don't <laughs> get this. Yeah. Like, if you yeah. want to boo, if you want to boo him at a Scotland England game, Ireland England, Wales England, France England, whatever. XR versus Saracens. Well, do you, you want to boost uh, Owen Farrell like that? Go for it. Don't do it. Like, British and Irish just four teams become one. That's the whole thing. Yeah. If, yeah. if it was a tight game with Japan or any game that Owen Farrell's been playing in this tour and he gets a last minute drop goal, who's going to boo him? Nobody. No, exactly. Exactly. It's all the shit. Sorry. Pardon my French. Yeah, but, yeah. yeah. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm going to say Bundyaki. I think Bundyaki gets a lot of hate. Where, well, I don't. I think for the most part, it's not even deserving. You know, it's just people hating on him for either the fact that either he's not Irish or just the fact that he's a quote unquote terrible player. But I think he gets a lot of undeserving hate, and I feel sorry for the guy at times. Yeah, yeah of course, I'm an ill-disciplined player. He's had two red cards, and that's it. Yeah, and I. Owen I feel... Farrell should have had. Six. Yeah, I feel sorry for. Well, I also feel sorry. I also respect our our boy Kyle, who's always defending him out there on TikTok. So oh, I would always back Kyle on Bundyaki. He's proven himself gold with this line still. Yeah, I, I I will back Kyle's rugby opinions on most. Things. I will back him today. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Lich, I will always back Kyle. Fair. We yeah. Just I, um, we just need uh Kyle to say that Liam Williams is a great player, and hopefully Murray will change his tune. <laughs> I am asking that after this show. Um, no. Um, Just asking I, for a I, friend. <laughs> um, Farrell, I get, but he he is he is probably overhated, but I mean he deserves it. On a referee perspective, he gives so much. Just he gets away with so much. I just can't stand it. Um, right, my odd one, like like a bit one like Sean did, and just bear with me when I explain this. Alan Wynne Jones. Before the line story, he's getting so much hate. Going, he's off the pace. He's old and all mm-hmm. of this. And then yep. he got, it, and then he got injured. And like some people, were really, really horrible about it. And mm-hmm. then I have seen a lot of people, Alan Wynne Jones coming back from this injury, and everyone going, "Oh my god, Alan Wynne Jones!" But I have seen those same people going, "Alan Wynne Jones shouldn't be near the tour, let alone the captaincy." So I think Alan Wynne Jones is a good example of someone. I don't know what it is, but everyone's all of a sudden like, "Oh, Alan Wynne Jones!" But uh, like before the line story, everyone's like. Oh. I've got one, just an extra one. I think you two definitely know about it. So about March, April time, I've seen a video that Lucy Summits overhyped, overrated, not ready for the Lions tour because he's not went against South Africa, but yet near had Duhan van der Merva, nobody criticised. And yet now, oh look at Lucy Summit go, he's fine on the Lions. I'm like, you absolute hypocrites. I mean, to be fair, he did do well against South Africa, A, eh? So you can't say that point anymore. <laughs> he held Colby. Yeah, he had and a that's full why grasp we... of chess like Colby. Did anyone see the video of Zamet? Um, it was again. They did score the try. Um, South Africa he did score the try in the corner. But did you have you seen this video where he comes from the other side? So yeah. he's behind play, yeah. and he's the other oh, side yeah. of the pitch, and he runs across and he catches him up. I mean, yeah. make that. Make say that play started two seconds earlier. Say Zamet got a second earlier, Zamet would have got him into touch. Yeah, yeah. It, it's like that. Like everyone, and I think his defense has been good. So I think I agree with you on that one. There's a few well, Welsh get in a lot. I think of these players who, until they do something right, it, it does happen a lot. Actually, you said that there was a third part to this question. Yes, underrated. <sighs> oh. I'll let Sean go first. We'll keep the order. There's a few egg scratches in this one. Yeah. No. <laughs> For this one, um, I have two. I think there's yeah. Hugo Keenan. I think he's very underrated. I think he's criminally underrated. I think he's brilliant. Yeah. 
um, and someone who is probably proven fairly rated now that he's a lion. But um, as you've all been you know, hyping him up all, all episode, uh, Marcus Smith, he's been phenomenal. Yes. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Murray, you want to crack on? I mean, again, just head over to my TikTok. I got asked for an underrated 15. So take your pick. And no, I'll, I'll do what Sean did. I'll, I'll give two. One is fairly obvious. We discussed him early on in the show. Nicolas Sanchez. Yeah, yeah. So good off the tee. He controls the pace of the game well. Yeah, and yet nobody talks about him. So yeah. there we go. Another one for me, I think, probably because he's slacked off recently. Um, I don't think people appreciate just how quick Darcy Graham actually is. Oh, yeah, no, I like Darcy Graham. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll give an honourable mention actually because that's just more of just a key factor. Yeah. Carol Toon Kafafi. The big loose head prop with a beautiful moustache that plays for New Zealand. Yeah, 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 yeah. When he is fully fit, like granted he's out injured and out, so hopefully he makes a speedy recovery, but he has started, since he came onto the scene in like 2018, I want to say. No, 2019, sorry, just after the World Cup. Yeah. So his first season, yeah, first season 2019 with the Blues. So 2020 onwards, there's a lot of games for New Zealand. He has basically clamped down that number one jersey. Yet, no one talks about him. And he's absolutely phenomenal. He's only like 26. He looks about 34. I think that's just the moustache. If he shaves, yeah. a good 20 years yeah. off him. But yeah, like, solid. Never goes away any penalties. Makes great hits. Can... Break through that first defender on the attack. Simmons. Criminally underrated. Simmons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's captain to everything. Mm-hmm. And he doesn't he doesn't miss a kick. He, he is just class. And he, he, he's just a good, good 10. And my other, he's got to be Adam Beard. For current at currency, Adam Beard. 100%. Yeah, yeah fair enough. Think of I all. Yeah, I'm, not, I'm not commenting anymore. I've talked about Adam Beard too much this evening. <laughs> oh, I get yeah. honourable mention because I we hyped this guy up when he got into the Ireland squad and Sean might back me up on this one. Ulster's um, Mike Lowry. Yeah. He's I think he's, everyone's good. like, oh, he's too small. Shane Williams was too small. He yeah. was great. I, I'd love to see Mike Lowry get a run out for Ireland. Yeah, he's been class in fairness. He can play 10 as well. He's, he can play all over the park. He's, he's a nice guy. But great player. Like. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think um, we probably we've covered a lot. I think we're we're uh, over an hour and twenty minutes anyway. I think already probably even longer. Uh, we've covered a lot of rugby today, have we, lads? Any final thoughts, sir? I mean, next yes. week, sadly, I'm not as much rugby, but we do have a first test, so I think it'll be a big analysis of that one next week. Yeah, that would be nice. Yeah, yeah, we've got nothing else, that really. Big I think that special. is it. Yeah, big so nothing really next happens week. in that we are just talking first test next week. Yeah, cool. And and, be... and major league semis. Yes, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Appreciate that, Simeon. Um yeah. When do, when does the rugby championship no that was that'll start after the Lions. Yeah, and then we've got Olympics. Time. We do have sevens in the Olympics coming up, which I think we should cover. That'll be, be fun, yeah. Cool. I'm that'll up for that. Fine. Yeah. Ireland yeah, for gold. So... Ireland for gold. GB, sorry. GB, GB. We'll see. Let's be honest. <laughs> let's, let's be honest. Fiji's getting it. <laughs> Ooh, I, to be honest, I kind of want Fiji to get it just because I like seeing him win it. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, this has been a fun one. Absolutely. And just thank you to all the support again for keeping this show going. Thank you for the great question. I know it was a three part question, but yeah, great question. I enjoyed that question. That was grand. Thank you. Um, we'll be on it. Three of us again next week. Nobody's got planned holidays or, or anything. <laughs> nope. Do the week after, but yeah. <laughs> That's fine. Um, yeah, just not much else to say. We've we've got guests lined up. We're discussing guests all the time. We're very busy. Yeah, we try to find more. We have people. Yeah. We have we on a fun what? note. We do have someone very very special, but just we might yet. not be getting them for a while. Yeah. I spoke to a certain club, that's all I'm saying, not dropping names, and I got told, basically, not yet, speak when the season starts. Which, and that's again, what I've basically been told as well. I, so. spoke to, I spoke to another club that said, 
wait till the players come back in August, so that's a little bit earlier. So yeah, it's it's looking promising. Grand. Absolutely. Yep. So um yeah, so that's been episode seven of the Rugby Connection Podcast. Thanks a million once again for tuning in and we'll see you all next week. See you later. Try. <laughs>